Well, we're in uh, June, the month of the Sacred Heart, of course, and that's where we go. We go to our Lord's Sacred Heart. That's the source of all. That's the fount of living waters, you know. And uh, that's the um, where our Lord nourishes the human soul, as I mentioned uh, recently in a, in a sermon. You know, to, to live in this world physically, we need to have air, food, and water, right? Sustain life. Well, in a sense, that reflects what is necessary for the soul to live. Uh, we need to breathe. And the breath of the soul really is the Holy Ghost, Spiritus, right? The spirit, the respiration of the soul, the life of grace in the soul. That is the life of the soul, the presence of the Holy Ghost and sanctifying grace. The soul breathed by grace. And uh, so we also have the nourishment that our Lord uh, came to give us. We have, of course, the living waters uh, of, of, of baptism itself, right? And we have the, uh, the nourishment of the Holy Eucharist, the Blessed Sacrament, that our Lord has given us, the, the living bread that has come down from heaven. It's bread that is not only living, but the point is it's living with a life that it can give. It gives life. And um, that life that it gives is uh, you know, the divine life, the divine life. It breathes divine life into the human soul. So there we find, uh, there we find the sacred heart of Jesus right there. We find that our Lord has actually given his heart to us. We marvel, we marvel uh, at the apparitions of our Lord showing St. Margaret Mary his own heart. I mean, our Lord in this apparition actually took his heart in his hand and held it out before the eyes of St. Margaret Mary and said to her, Behold the heart that is so loved, and men, mankind, and is rewarded with so much forgetfulness, negligence, and contempt. Right? Our Lord even went so far as to exchange hearts with her. That's quite beautiful, really, when you think about it. Right? It's very beautiful. Well, we marvel at this taking place in 1681, 82, 83 to St. Margaret Mary in a convent far, far away. But we realize, you know, when we receive Holy Communion, that's exactly what we receive. That's what our Lord does. He, he, he takes his heart and he actually gives it to us in this way, in the Blessed Sacrament. And what he did with St. Margaret Mary is very symbolic, but what he does... <clears throat> but he gives us Holy Communion is not just symbolism. It is real. He's actually placing his heart next to our hearts. He's placing his heart within us. We do appreciate the significance of that. I mean, it's so spectacular. It's so wonderful that it's hard to imagine. Because it's hard to imagine, one might find it's kind of hard to, not, not hard to believe, but hard to appreciate it. But that's where we have to overcome the limitations of human imagination by faith and faith that is enlightened by prayer, so that our Lord can impress upon us the significance of this fact. We can say it's true without appreciating the truth of it, right? The significance of it. The important thing is not only believing it's true, the important thing is to appreciate the significance of it. And there's the source of, there's, there's the subject of meditation, a lot of meditation. So I suggest that during this month of June, we meditate upon that very fact, right? that our Lord has left, in a sense, left his heart among us here, living, right? living heart in our tabernacles, and he wants to come to us in Holy Communion, um, because he's not impressed by our tabernacles of stone, our tabernacles of brass or steel or whatever. He's what he what he really created to be the Tez tabernacle eternally or immortally is your soul and mine. That's the tabernacle he wants. That's where he wants to be. So uh, let's give him that. <laughs> Until next time, we ask that you all remember the words of Our Lady at Fatima. You consecrate yourselves and your families to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and to pray and do penance. Thank you and God bless you.